Hi everyone, welcome to Friday Fun. Today we're out in the preserve and we're gonna talk about Canada geese. And on the right behind me, there's a pair of geese. And when Canada geese choose a mate, the husband and the wife, they stay together for life. They never get divorced. Let's see if we can zoom in on the geese. They're a little bit brave. We might be able to get a little closer. If you look at them carefully, they're eating little plants and grasses from the ground. They're pulling up the plants and grasses. They have mostly a black head and a black bill, but they also have that white patch on their cheek. So the neck and the head is all black except for the white patch. And then the body and the wings are brown and those big feet are black. And there's a little bit of white right under the tail. Those are big black webbed feet, good for swimming. Now we had a pair of geese, and this might be this pair that had a nest near the area where we are. And this weekend, some raccoons got into the nest and ate all the eggs. So these might be some sad parents. I don't know if they have enough time to start over and make new eggs. We'll see. But these are our Canada geese. We're getting really close now. They're just pulling plants up. They just eat plants and seeds. And occasionally, they'll eat some insects by accident, but that's good protein too. Those little bills are fast, aren't they? Look at that white cheek patch. That's how we can tell them they're Canada geese, but I don't know how to tell the girl from the boy. To me, they look the same. Now one is eating and the other one has the head held high because we got a bit closer. Okay, he's comfortable now. He trusts us. But when you see them and you get closer, usually one will be the, the guard with the head held high, keeping an eye out, making sure there's no dangers while the other one eats and then they'll trade. Okay. So here's a goose that's not pulling up little green, little green stuff from the bottom He's reaching up to the low willow branches and pulling the flowers off. And the flowers will be kind of sweet. Let's see if he can get another one. Well, now he's going toward the ground. Maybe this branch over here has something I want. Willow flowers are sweet. I'm going to eat those willow flowers because they're loaded with nectar. So these two are chasing the other ones off. There's some here under the in between the tree. Some things are happening. Some geese are mad and loud. Oh, they're fighting each other. You get away from me. No, you get away from me. <laughs> There's some action happening back there. So here we have a pair of mallards and a couple of geese. I saw the mallard sitting over here and I was wondering if she was sitting on eggs, but she got up right away and I don't see any nest right there. Here's a pair of mallard ducks. Mrs. Mallard has the feathers that look just like the nest. And Mr. Mallard has a beautiful green head and a white necklace and a black little black tail with a little bit of white and those bright orange feet and a yellow bill. Hers are also bright orange feet. And then under their wings, they have a little purple, which is kind of bluish purple wing bar. And it's kind of hard to see unless they lift their wing just a little bit and you can see the blue. I can kind of see just a little bit of that blue when he's walking. They both have the blue wing bar. And across that little area of water on the other side is another Canada goose. It's all by itself could be that he has a wife on the nest. Or it could be that she's somewhere else. There he is. Or it could be she, I'm not sure. I can't tell them apart. Just tromping through the mud. The ducks and the geese seem to get along just fine. It's just the geese that fight with the geese and the ducks that fight with the ducks. Oh, 
Well, look over here. Wherever we have geese, we have plenty of goose poop. And goose poop looks a lot like duck poop, but it's much bigger. So you can see by the size of my hand, those are big as fingers, aren't they? That's some fresh goose poop. You don't want to step in, that's kind of messy. So when the geese go to the bathroom, just like all birds, they don't have pee and poop separately, it comes out together. So the white part is kind of like the pee and the green part is kind of like the poop, but it comes all together. So when you look on the, the pavement and you see like a splat of white with some other stuff, that's usually a bird poop. But the goose poops are big. Here comes the two geese, and they started building a nest, and we found it, so now they're honking. Now, they know that we're bigger than they are, but we'll go over there and take a peek real quick, and then we'll go away so we won't upset them. There's no eggs yet. They're just getting ready. So, coming down this path and around this big tree, down near the water, there's a pile of feathers, and she plucked them right off her chest to make her nest. They're starting to blow. Uh-oh, they better fix it. They better do a better job. So here is one of the feathers, and it looks like they're starting to blow. So this nest is starting to come apart. They didn't do a very nice job, and it was sitting maybe over here, and now it's blowing, and it got caught on that stick. You can see that these feathers came out of her chest because they're really, really fluffy. And when they're fluffy, they keep them really warm and soft. So that nest, oh, I see some more blowing around. That nest didn't work. They're going to have to start over again. Let's keep looking for something else. So look at the little frogs. They're hiding in leaf litter, but when they jump, you can see them. Oh, I'm seeing them all over. Let me move this stick. As I get closer, oh, they're tucking in a little bit. Where'd they go? Oh, there's one here. You can see them go. There's one here. There she goes. Oh my gosh, it's so hard to see them. These are our Pacific tree frogs. Oh, he's right by your shoes. Now he's over here. <laughs> now he's behind you. Maybe I better catch him. I got him. Now my fingers are all full of mud. Now my little tree frog is pretending to be dead, but he's awake now. Look at how cute. They're very small, and they feel kind of slippery and damp. There's a little black line that goes through their eye to their back. Oh. He hopped off. Those frogs are so cute. So here we have a little tree squirrel, little fox squirrel, just rubbing his mouth. He's got to gnaw a little bit on the wood to make sure he can make his teeth a little bit shorter. And he's rubbing his scent marking, or maybe he's got something on his mouth from something he ate, and he's trying to clean himself. He's just looking at us. He's pretty brave. Looks like a young guy. He looks kind of younger, but he's got a nice fluffy tail. This is our fox squirrel. Let's see what else he's going to do. Oh, he's going to hide. Here we found another goose just eating some grass all by himself. Maybe there's another nest nearby. Maybe someone's sitting on some eggs. I hope so. Well, we found a nice spot. And behind me, I can hear the geese are honking like crazy. They are making a racket. So we saw the geese, and now I want to show you what the goslings look like. It's not time yet, but they're fuzzy little yellow guys when they hatch out of their eggs. Once they hatch out of their eggs, they leave the nest and they never go back to the nest. They follow their parents one by one in line. They already know how to eat. They know how to do those things, but they need their parents to protect them so that no other animals like a hawk won't get them or a coyote or a skunk or a 
even now nah, I don't think a possum could catch it, but maybe a raccoon. So when they're really young, they're easy to catch. And so their parents need to protect them and they follow them everywhere. And when it's time to go to sleep at night, mama goose opens up her wings and they tuck under like a big blanket umbrella and they all stay warm. This is what the goslings look like. And we'll see some of those. I'm not sure how soon it'll be until they hatch. Slowly but surely, they start getting their grown-up feathers, and they look more and more like the adults. I wanted to show you something else about the geese. And it's true for all birds that go in the water. And here's two birds that are not geese. Here's the duck, the mallard duck, and here's the heron. They have to put oil on their feathers so their feathers don't get wet and they don't get cold. The oil makes them waterproof so they can be in the water just fine. And the geese do exactly the same thing. On the back, on top, right above their tail is an oil gland. And they get some of that oil in their bill and then they put it on the feathers. So here's the bill and they just stroke the feathers with the oil to make the feathers waterproof. So here's our story for this week and it's called Honk Honk Goose. And we know we were listening to them. They are so noisy. Honk, honk, goose. Canada geese start a family. Let's see what happens. Honk. He honk, honk. In chilly mid March, a male goose called and chased. He chased squirrels, honk. Ducks, honk. Geese, honky, honk, honk. He chased away all except a female goose. He and she spent all their time together. Dabble, dip, they paddled in the pond. Pluck and pull, they fed on plants. Stretch, curved their neck and danced. Then they mated. Splash, 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 they took baths. Inside the female goose, eggs began to form. It was time to make a nest. Honky, honk, the male chased away a muskrat. Honky snapped at a snapping turtle. Honky honk, he rushed at a possum. The female goose stacked sticks and grasses. She plucked soft feathers from her breast and used them to line the nest. Then she started laying eggs, one each day. One, 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 one. On the fifth day, when the geese were feeding, a raccoon rolled an egg out of the nest. Crack! Honky, honk, 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 hiss, the male goose called. Flap, flap, he lunged, and the raccoon ran. But one egg was already broken. The next day, the female laid another, and the next day she laid the last. All the eggs were laid, so she sat on them to warm them. Now and then she stood and turned the eggs. The male goose floated nearby. Honk, he honked at a kingfisher. Honk, he honked at a skunk. Honky, honk, honk, he chased away a heron. Early each morning and evening, the female goose took breaks to bathe and eat. Under the goose down blanket, the eggs stayed warm until she returned. For 28 days, the mother goose sat on the eggs, and then she heard a sound. Crack, crick, peek, peep. The chicks were hatching. First one, then two at once, then suddenly three. Six wet chicks dried in the sun. The male goose stood guard. Honk, he honked at the squirrels. Honk. He honked at the ducks. Honky honk at neighboring geese. The day after the chicks had hatched, the father and mother took a stroll. Twelve wobbly legs followed them. There are six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And if each of them have two legs, that makes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve wobbly legs. The parents slid into the water. The chicks followed. Plop, 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 plop. Dabble, dip, they paddled. 
pluck and pull, they fit on plants. The mother goose walked up the muddy bank and settled down to rest. Scratch, slip, slip, the tired chicks climbed. Peep, 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 they scrambled for places under her wings. Peep, yawn, peep, yawn. Eyelids drooped, soon the chicks were asleep. Every goose asleep, except for the father goose, who stood guard. He stayed alert and ready to chase away any danger. Honky, honk, honk. Making sure that nobody gets his chicks. That's a good story. Well, I'm so glad you could join us for Friday Fun and learn about geese. We're going to head into the classroom and we're going to do a little teleport activity. So we came into the museum to talk a little bit more about the birds that come when the marsh has water. So I'm looking in the cases and here's some birds that we have when it, there's water in the marsh. We have some herons and we have an American coot. We have a whole family of mallards. Now mallards are ducks, right? We can look at their feet. Their feet have skin in between the toes. We call that webbed feet. Mallards have orange webbed feet. And if we look at the coot, the coot is not a duck. It has extra skin on its toes, but in between the toes, there's no skin. So he's not a duck. He's called a coot. Now, the coots will definitely make nests and have babies in the marsh. And the mallard ducks will have nests and babies in the marsh. But some of the other ducks have already left. We have a green-winged teal and a northern shoveler duck, and they were here for part of the winter, but they're flying up north now, part of their migration, to go make their nests in a place that's safer to make nests. So they're not here anymore. And we have some herons, a big great blue heron, and some egrets, and they'll stay here year-round. We've not, never seen them actually make a nest here in the preserve, but maybe one day. But in the last maybe eight years, we've had the Canada geese actually make their nests and have their goslings here at our preserve. And they used to never do that. They're called Canada geese because they fly to Canada to make their nests. That's a long migration. It takes weeks to get there. And they have to fly and fly and very, very tired. But things are changing. The climate is changing and they've decided that they can make their nests here and they can stay around the area where there's enough food for them. Not, they don't need to make the trip. Once the marsh is completely dry, like in August and September, until the rains come again, maybe December or January, there's no geese here. There's no ducks here. There's no egrets either. They've left and didn't wait till the rain comes back. Where have they gone? They've gone to other local water sources. Maybe they went to Alondra Park. Maybe they went to Harbor Park. Other places where there's water all year. And then when it's time for them, the rains to come and fill the marsh again, they come back. So we came into the classroom and here we're on the bird section. The birds. We're in the discovery zone. This is where all the things are for kids to look at. We're getting closer to opening the nature center so you'll be able to come in soon and see it. So we have today our Canada goose on the felt board. And I wanted to show you the parts. So you can see it has black feet, a black neck, a black bill, a black eye, and a black tail. So it has a lot of black. But on this neck, there's a white cheek patch, a white breast, and a little white underneath part. And then the wings and the other part of the underneath part are brown and tan. So those are the parts of the Canada goose. So now we're gonna take it apart and we're gonna see the different parts. Here's the white cheek mark. Here's the black eye. Here's the neck, the bill, the head and the neck all in one piece, all black. Here's the breast. Here's the, the brown wing. Here's the black tail. Here's the underneath tan part and the back part that's underneath is white and the two black feet. So if we start with the two black feet, then we can add the underneath parts. The front part is tan and the back part is white. And maybe I even have to make this one go down a little bit lower so that the, the wing will fit nicely on top. 
and then the tail fits right back here. There's the black tail. And then here in the front, this is where the, the white breast goes. Then we can bring down the, the neck and the head and that fits right in here. And of course we need an eye and we need the, the little cheek patch. And there's our Canada goose and you can identify it by all those different colored parts. Now a goose makes a honking noise and it's really loud. And a goose has feathers because it's a bird. And I have many different kind of feathers here in my display. We have some that are very big. I don't know this one. This one looks like it might be from a pelican. That's a big seabird that dives in the water and has a pouch. And I think, well, this one could be a goose feather. That one looks like an owl. Maybe this is another goose feather. And then we have ducks. And the duck feathers are just a little bit smaller. So this one's probably a goose feather. And let me show you about the feathers. When it, see this, the vein that's in the middle, that line in the middle of the feather? And you can see how the part underneath is long and the part on top is really short. So this means that when it's part of the wing, so it doesn't need much here, but it needs a lot underneath to catch the air underneath to get the lift so it can fly. Now this feather doesn't have it has the middle section, see the vein in the middle, and they're long on both sides. So this is from a different part. If it's from a feather, it's not part of the front of the flying. I mean, sorry, from the, if it's part of the wing, it's not from the front part of the flying wing. Like the front part of the flying wing is the shorter one. It might be sitting back further in the wing. And these are feathers from the goose. There's so many fun feathers here and so many fun birds to come see at the marsh. I hope you can come visit. Thanks for joining us for Friday Fun. Bye.